And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. It is Sunday night at 10 p.m. I wanted to bring you this cryptocurrency video because I think the market is doing something really fun right now. We'll get into some price action theory. We'll get into some what I'm doing right now to pull money out of the markets. And um, just in general, what uh, is likely to happen going into the week ahead of us. So let's jump into some of the shorter term time frames where I believe we can start things off here. And I was just looking at the four hour fib um, retracement, right? So from on a bearish retracement from the low to the high here, you can notice we just closed a four hour below the 0.5 and barely Tippy tap that 618, not quite, but close enough is close enough. As you can see, some people already jumped in on that potential bear trap, uh, but volatility is increasing. Momentum is to the downside and will remain down as long as Bitcoin is below this uh, cre key critical pivot, 26,300. So just... Noticing that on the four hour here uh, for Bitcoin. Now, next up, what do we have here? Next up, what do we have here? Well, I want to bring us back to our attention on the 15 minute time frame as uh, well, I believe this was uh, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to bring our attention to the weekend trap box. If you were trapped in price action, Shout out to Rob. I know it's painful. I know it's painful being trapped and you probably got stopped out or you capitulated right here, which um, not a good place to capitulate, but that's what the market makers do. They want to force you to um, dump your position right before they take the profits from you. Uh, they liquidate you. And um, yeah, so getting back to what I was talking about, the fifth... The weekend trap, as you can see here, starting with uh, when the market closes for the futures, right? So uh, right here, uh, Friday afternoon, market closes and everybody gets trapped in this little box right here. Call it the, uh, the weekend trap box for now, okay? And what happens? Well, this is what I would... There's two ways to look at this. Either this was the false move, which to be fair, the weekend did not end until right here. So um, could this be the false move to the downside? We will find out coming into Monday. But what I wanted to bring to our attention right now is what's going on on the lower term time frame. So anyways, they force the price up, grab the liquidity and punch it down. And essentially, uh, if this market is going to pick itself up by its bootstraps and make a higher low, or a higher low on the 15 minute time frame now, but essentially I'm, I'm not thinking that's what's happening here. If anything, as long as we're below the box, uh, pressure's on the downside and notice the pivot, uh, we talked about 26,300 close enough is close enough. Anyways. Um, yeah. So if this is going to be the false move to the downside before we get some upside action, which I wouldn't be surprised, right? Wouldn't be too surprised about that. Um, we're looking for a W formation. What is a W going to look like right now? Well, something like this, right? So down up higher low and then we want to close above that middle peak but what i don't see here is a high volume candle so actually and we got a closure below that low so price is still making lower lows and lower highs but essentially we would want to see a closure above this peak and then a higher low and something like that <coughs> would look good for a trapped to the downside, right? Which I'm going to pull up the uh, liquidations heat map here just uh, and notice that liquidity over the weekend. So trap box hits the liquidity. And if we punch through it, 
We're coming down to 25.6 and 24.550. And then all the way down here, you got some liquidity at 21.7, which do I think it stops there? Probably not. Uh, probably the wicks are going to get going, you know, pretty fast to the downside at that point. But what I do notice here. Um, so anyways, if um, we're just going to continue to stair step it down, right? This is uh, essentially your first leg down and then your second leg down. Uh, so we could expect some sideways consolidation probably going into uh, the U.S. market open. So what is the job of the Asian market session? Well, you set the uh, high and the low for the day. So here's the low, here's the high, and you'd expect some ranging to go in unless something else different happens. Going into the UK session, uh, you would expect trend... Uh, uh, kind of like sideways action, right, uh, in the UK session. And that's when the UK futures market is open. Then you get a little shutdown. US market opens and it's either trend continuation or reversal. So when does the US market open? 6.30 a.m. Pacific time. All you New Yorkers out there, well, good for you. You get to sleep in. I, I don't know what it's like and nor do I like it, sir. I don't, I don't even like to sleep in. I don't even like to sleep. No, I do like to sleep, but sleep evades me for some reason. Um, anyways, so if we know Bitcoin's probably going to take a leg down, um, let's see, let's check out some of our momentum oscillators here. And what I'm talking about is the stochastic in particular. On the 15 minute, we're going to remain down <clears throat> as long as we're below 26,141 on Bitcoin. And well, pressure's on to the downside right now. And uh, giving us the uh, bias, well, probably going to get a little bit more to the downside. Running a quick little trade here right now. Uh, just targeting a move right down here. So... Let's see how, by the way, there is a referral link. If you guys want to check out BitGet, um, there's a referral link in the description below. Not my favorite place. I prefer what's called Mexi, which is this other exchange, but there's a link below. Long story short, um, I do want to set that stop loss take profit, right? And uh, I guess I'll go ahead and do that. Am I looking for 10%? No, I'm just looking for a little scalpy scalp here, short-term trade. And uh, anyways, I just hit confirm there. Take profit, stop loss. Remember, if you don't have all those things here, well, essentially you're going to get whacked because you don't have a plan. You don't have a strategy. And if you're trading with leverage in the futures market, it's a good way to get liquidated real quick. And um, yeah, so let's see how this works out while we're while we're on stream here, while we're while we're taking trades live. Um, I am just targeting a move right there. So why is that? And frankly, I mean, I could go for a little bit more, but let's not be greedy here. Let's not be greedy. Let's take a look at the liquidation levels on Mr. Ethereum right here. Found high block capital to be very useful in looking for the liquidity because, right, that's where the price is going to go. And if Asia already set the low of the day, well, perhaps the low does not get taken out. But I'll bring our attention just to this, these little tiny nodes right here. You can see liquidity, three and a half million. So if the market maker sends price down there, um, do they put three and a half million in their back pocket? I don't know. I don't know exactly what it means, but I do know that price action bounces off these levels. And again, this is tracking Binance. So it's not going to be exact to Mexi or BitGet or Coinbase or any of the others, but that's where the most volume is traded. And that's where you can expect some, some things to happen. It's usually a little bit of a bounce, right? You can see bounce off of that level, right? Uh, that was 3 million in liquidity. 
and that's another three and a half million. So why not just take those profits early and often, early and often. And, um, and besides the dollar getting shafted, absolutely shafted. Well, if the dollar does get shafted, which I don't think the dollar is getting shafted right now. Sorry, guys, I'm going all over the place here. Ethereum, Bitcoin, futures, leverage. Um, let's just let's just see if I can put some words together that make sense here. So grabs the liquidity, forces the move down, and bouncing off a five-minute level here for Bitcoin. So is this the sideways trapping type formation? Perhaps, yes, perhaps. Let's take a look at NASDAQ on the day. So just by taking above yesterday's or Friday's high, you should get a nice little retracement back up to this level. Uh, S&P 500 did close below the level, so I am expecting a move down into this box this week. So even if we bounce first, I uh, would expect a little bit more downwards action, giving us some bias for Bitcoin to come down. And same thing here, NASDAQ coming down to this box. We want to see how it reacts here. And Dow Jones, what's Dow Jones, Dow Jones doing? You can see momentum is uh, crossed down, volatility is increasing, and I would expect maybe a bounce off of this area on the first pass, but overall not looking good for traditional markets. And we did say last week after that quadruple witching, uh, after the quadruple witching, which was option expiration for all the witches out there, um, that would result in some downward price action last week for NASDAQ, S&P, and uh, yeah, or downward, just weak price action. Anyways, so looking droopy for traditional markets and how is Mr. Dollar doing? Mr. Dollar is climbing up the wall of worry, so to speak. The wall of worry. I don't know. I, it's just a fun thing to say. I don't know what that is, but essentially um you know just making higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows you can see like 30 days of upwards price action here since july 18th we're coming into uh september 24th so maybe that's like two months july it is 10 o'clock on a weekend uh july and yeah that's that's going to be two months two months of up so does it get a retracement? Again, if it does get a retracement, that's the area I am looking for. But let's check out what economic news is going to be affecting the dollar coming out today. An interesting concept. Try and wrap your head around this one. When bond prices go down, yields go up. Hmm. I don't know what that means exactly. But I do know this, that we've been looking at the bond market and when interest rates in the bond market, the two years at 5% and almost hit our target, pretty pretty darn close. Close enough is close enough. Why would you put your money in the market when it's about to drop and you can get 5% for two years? That's pretty darn good. And um, this looks like a bit of a breakout as well. Yes, look at that. Well, Volatility increasing, and we are crossing down from a high level, but that doesn't mean anything. We want to see it get back down below here if on, if the 10-year is going to come down. <clears throat> Let's see what the two-day says. Up, up. Higher-term time frames rule the market, and the four-day looking like that as volatility is almost above 25%. Not quite, but... Uh, could mean some more upside pressures for uh, the, um, you know, for the bond market, which is not traditionally good for the stock market. So we are, we are, you know, climbing the wall of worry here as well. And you can see this nice little uh, breakout retest kind of thing right here. 
What am I talking about? Breakout retest. Well, this perhaps cup and handle, not, not yet, maybe not yet confirmed, but, uh, bond market is going to be very important when it comes to, uh, the stock market. If bond yields keep going higher, dude, people are not going to leave their money out to dry in a market that is probably going to collapse at some point this year. Some point. Now, I don't know. I, you know, honestly, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball, but, um, and, and don't ever, you know, don't fight the fact that the Fed is willing to print money at will. And so is, um, you know, Joe Biden and Janet Yellen, they want to have diversity inclusion. So we got to send money to Ukraine, right? But we can't help the people in Hawaii. Gosh, it's pretty disappointing out there uh, that, you know, I love me some Hawaii. And uh, it looks like a wasteland now. Uh, so I would probably move this up here and call it a breakout. And where does this, go? oh, it's pretty darn close to our target. And what, why is that target there? Well, we're just targeting kind of the range highs here, the wick high right there, and probably going to get a little sell off of there, but makes a higher high. So 10 year, 30 year, all looking like up. Good luck getting a mortgage at 20%. Just kidding. It's probably going to be eight or 9% uh, before the end of the year. So you might as well buy that house now, buy it now. Anyway, so bond yields going up, dollar going up, and not good for traditional markets. Anyways, back onto our trade. Oh, are we getting a little profits here? Are we getting, are we getting there? Well, we're up 3.3%, not bad on about 18 Ethereum, a little small little position here. Getting going for the evening here. Actually, this is the second trade. The second trade, which uh, if you want to join the VIP Discord right now and get some trade signals, um, we all you got to do is DM us and we will unlock. We'll unlock the trade signals. You can try it for 30 days for free. Join and don't miss out, dudes. Like, it's so easy to click buttons and make money. I, 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 you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, all right, back on to what we were talking about. A little bit longer of a video. I have some time here and, and then I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta get home at some point, but, um, what do I want to say? Well, I don't wear these glasses because I'm blind. It's because, um, it's because, and I, and I might want to just, oh no, I'll just let it, let it play out guys. Let's let it play out. Let's let it play out. Let's let, let's let the, let the signal go, you know, and back on a Bitcoin. Back on a Bitcoin, and uh, we're getting into the box. Uh, where did this box come from? I'm looking at, oh, maybe a high value candle. No, nope. this is a different chart. That's what it is. Back on to Mr. Oh, yeah, Mr. Uh, what is it called? Binance, 15 minute. All right, let's see if we see anything else on the daily time frame that we want to be aware of. Well, it's these, the snake eyes right here. That's what I'm going to call. I'm going to coin this, the snake eyes pattern. And also notice the trend line coming in here. So this is where the bounces typically happen off the 618, off the, uh, off the <coughs> major trend line. Where's that trend line coming back all the way back from this guy right here. So. Do we have any hidden bullish divergence forming? Well, by the way, one of the most powerful ways, and if you join the VIP now, you're going to get access to the course, Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis, because this is a trader's market. This is, if, if you have nothing else to do in your day and you want to make money, well, 
most people have a job, so we created the signals to where even if you're at your job, you can take the signal on your phone and click a couple buttons and make some money. So let's have some fun with it. And what I can do now, since we are, in, uh, I'm not going to, this is a small position. Let's, let's let it play out. Let's, let's go for that liquidity zone on, well, we marked it off for Bitcoin. Um, no, we didn't mark it up. 24,550. So does that line up with anything here? 24,550 would be right here at the bottom side of the range. Oh, right there. Right there at that wick, right? 24,550. Is that, so that's the next, that's the area where everybody stops or hanging out. And if we did see a deviation, right? So call it a deviation, whatever you want to call it. Some little wick down and then a closure back above 27.3 on the daily time frame. It's going to look good for a major bounce. And is a major bounce brewing? Yes. Well, on the daily, volatility has decreased again. Two day, three day on the floor. Momentum is to the upside right now. And if it does cross back down below 25,593, the two day, three day closure is going to be uh, quite a ways away here. But uh, notice all of these moving averages bunched together. We got the 200, the 21, and the 9 all slinking down to the downside. All the lower term time frame moving averages are crossed to the downside now alongside of a death cross. And so as long as we're below that pivot, pressure's on the downside uh, for Mr. Mr. ETH, or sorry, Mr. Bitcoin. So just something to be aware of. Five day as well is crossed up, putting in that potential bounce signal, two days and nine hours. We'll cross back down below 25,648. So if we do get that cross back down, alongside volatility expansion. And again, this is why I wait for 25%. Because how many fake out moves do you want? Like one, two? It typically doesn't go until it gets above 25%. However, you know, maybe you like that 10% thing and uh, 9%, whatever you want to call it sip of water here a little nothing like a little diet snapple right mm. i'm so close to taking a profit on this one i'm just going to take it so here we go if you were in the vip discord you would have got this signal see how close we are oh oh come on blow it down come on and then they got this little button called flash close. Flash close. We got three minutes left on this candle and I am just going to take it. Should I take it? It's four and a half percent. It's 120 bucks on a small little trade here. This is that exchange I was mentioning called Mexi. And what is probably going to happen, guys, if we do take out this level coming all the way down. But I think we could bounce one more time. One more time. Get the, I've gotten this trade a couple times already this evening. So it's so hard, right, to just take those profits. Is it that hard? Is it that hard? Let's check on our other one. Different exchange. Come on. Here he goes. Come on. <sighs> Boom. And was I early? Only BitGet will know. And I probably was early, but I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to take some profits. You never get hurt taking a profit. So why don't we take this one as well? And this one, boom, let's take it. Confirm, no, I don't wanna see that signal anymore. Boom, cha-ching. Okay, I guess that's how it's done. I guess that's how it's done and watch it just rip to the downside. Anyways, now that we've taken some profits, let's get back to our heat map and see what's going on here. See, I didn't wait for it anyways. Never get hurt taking a profit, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, look what happened. Look what happened. 
There goes all your profits. If, oh, darn. See, that's why it pays to do that every once in a while. Because you can get one more bounce and then play the signal one more time. Look at that. Look at that. So deviation above. Scared everybody out. Short the green 55. That's what I was telling you guys on Discord. And um, yeah, if you want to learn this trading method, well, go to CryptCourses.com and spend a couple of hours watching some videos where I lay everything out. So you don't have to really know anything. All you got to do is click some buttons and make some money. That's it. That's it. And I really want to show you guys how I can post this in the Discord. Let's see. Can I go here without showing all my passwords? Can I? Is it going to make me log in? Do you know? Discord is highly, highly annoying. Uh, I really don't like it. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a tech guy, honestly. At the end of the day, well, look, look at here. This was starting this evening. I said, hey guys, here's the short. Friendly reminder, the markets are open. This is all in the chat. If you want to get the VIP discord, you click there. <laughs> Uh, if you want to see the trade signals, whoa, look at that. And so I'm just gonna, I'm going to post those gains in the chat here, right here. I'm going to go to position history. You're going to see some losers, some winners, right? But you want to see more winners than losers, right? Anyways, um, jumping on here, boom. And we are 7% up for the day. So I guess depends on how much money you have in your account. 7% uh, isn't a bad day, right? 7% is not a bad day at all. And here's where I'm going to post it just so you guys know this is real. This is not, I ain't pretending. All right, back on to Bitcoin, back on to Bitcoin. And what other coins are bleeding it out? Do we want to short some altcoins today? Just XRPP coin, guys. I don't know why we call it that. This thing is a dumper, okay? It is a straight up dumper. Dump, dump, dump. Way faster to the downside. Volatility increasing. We're in the bearish control zone. Momentum crossing back to the downside and getting a weird little sell signal here. Um, sell continuation signal a bit on the hourly. So XRP looks like a dump, guys. And um, I would suspect our overall target to come down to the full retrace of 38 cents. And um, yeah, so XRP coin going to fill the wick in alongside Bitcoin taking a dump down to its wick, which it's OK. Let the wicks get filled. I don't I don't know if Bitcoin's all, you know, going to go all the way down there, but uh, this is the Bitcoin chart. Let's take a look at Ethereum heat map. So again, price is going to gravitate towards where the liquidity is where the most buy oh yes look at that ethereum at 1535 1480 and then a big node down here at about 1440 so i do imagine honestly if we start closing below 1535 i'd be looking for uh 1442 get hit and look at all that liquidity to the upside so if this is a trap Bitcoin to the downside based on our 15 minute trap zone, which I'm going to get back to right here. 15 minute trap zone. Well, grabbing liquidity down here. If we just get back above this box, guys, you can see a big run up for Bitcoin and well, Ethereum, a lot of liquidity up here. So do we get one tap down here, one tap to, back to the upside? Excuse me. Uh, yeah, that's probably going to be the case this week, guys, because we're coming in to the monthly close of September and Bitcoin. Bitcoin. 
It's a monthly close. Still an indecision candle. I don't have much to say on that. I think I'm running out of juice here, guys. I got to do some other things. I got to get home. We'll be bringing you some more lovely cryptocurrency videos this week. If you did enjoy it, if you learned something, if you got anything out of this video, please do smash the like button, pass it on to a friend, share it to your grandma. I don't care what you do with it, but you know, help the channel grow so we can get a bigger, you know, following channel of traders and help everybody make a bunch of money in crypto. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored week. I am going to post this uh, Monday morning. So it's going to be a little late, but at least you'll have something to go off coming in Monday morning and you'll see, hey, retracement back up to the box, back up to the green 55. Rejections here are going to mean lower prices and uh, well momentum is going to be to the downside on the four hour remember the four hour time frame is going to rule the market here 12 hours down getting in the critical zone it's not oversold it just means trending down until we flip back up and get back above this area with momentum well momentum's to the downside and this you know, can go lower the PMARP. That's a discussion for the other days, for other days. And 27,300, which is, yeah, this last lower high. So range, if we break the range to the downside, right? To the downside, first stop, 22,762. Second stop, right in line with that 20,000 bucks. So uh, just be aware of that. And on the shorter term time frames, again, I wouldn't mind one more push back up to the upside, grab some liquidity and a little more press to the downside. And keep your eye again on the five day closure coming up in two days and 19 minutes. Why? Well, this one, is a very powerful signal indicator. Five day time frame, weekly. Oh, we got the weekly closure, closing with a bit of a hammer, gravestone, whatever you want to call that. We already took out the weekly low. So now what do they do? They they do target the high, right? So if this is going to be the trap, again, you want to look for that. That's going to coincide with the dollar coming down. The dollar comes down again back. Oh, look at the dollar popping up, popping up. The dollar is strong. The dollar is a beast. Despite Joe Biden, the dollar is still a beast in the marketplace. And that's because, well, all the transactions around the world are done in dollars and no XRP is not going to save the swift banking system. Okay. Get over it. Dump it. Short it. Not financial advice. All right. I'm signing out guys. I'm done. Blessed and highly favored week. I hope you enjoyed. Take care.